Hello everybody, welcome back to another Commander game. I'm playing Tavern this time against Derevi. And I keep this hand. In turn one I just cast Ponder. I want to make sure I'm going to get lands. I decided to keep those cards even though there's not a lot of lands there. I figure with Ponder and Think Twice I should be able to get through those three and get to the next land quick enough. He just plays a land and passes, and I pass leaving up negate and think twice if he doesn't do anything. And so there you go, I'll think twice at the end of his turn. Alright, and this turn I can play Mr. Cremora and leave negate up. And he goes to have Starksteel Ingot. And he does not pay for Mystic Amora, so there you go, I get a free card out of it. And I will just counter this. Might as well keep him off mana if I can. And with this hand, there's no way I'm going to be keeping up counter magic later on. So this turn I decided to just play out Leyline. I figure it gives me the best option to next turn, either play Tavrind or Opposition at the end of his turn, so I can leave Desert up if I draw an island, or Desertion up. Uh, he just just returned to Dusted though, so that's fine. And as a result, I'll just run Tavrind out. And he just passes. So this turn I could pass leaving Desertion up. And he goes to cast Drowner of Hope, which is pretty much perfect for me because I could desertion it and I'll have Talrand, Drowner, a Drake, and two Scions and I could just play Opposition next turn and tap all his lands down at his upkeep and hopefully lock the game up. So I go ahead and do that. Cast Opposition. And I just passed. I could have cut. Uh, do I pass? Yeah. I could cast Light of Hand, but I figure with the Scions I could leave up Rift and Impulse instead. So it is upkeep. I go to Tar and tap down his lands. And he casts Gross and Grip. So he had the answer. The game drags on. Definitely have a better board state though. So I go in and attack. Uh, I don't attack with Talrand very often, if I could help it, just because I got blown out by Condemn that one time. Figure I might as well play around it. The extra 2 damage doesn't normally matter. And there, I'll go out and flash. Uh, he'll flash the Revy in and tap Talrin down anyways. I could have played Greaves pre-combat, but... I don't think I was set on doing that yet. I do end up playing them out, though. Alright, so he has Paragon Drake, which is basically just a free flyer. and Hornet Queen. So that's the problem. This deck has a lot of trouble getting by Hornet Queen. Obviously it's going to stall out the game a lot, and that's pretty scary when he has Derevi and Paragon Drake. So I'm going to sack a Scion here and use one blue to cast Impulse, and hopefully I have two blue and a colorless from the Scion up, which should be enough to cast any Counterspell I find. But I miss. So I gotta take through time, I have enough to cast it, so might as well. So I run that out. It's 
some okay options here. I end up grabbing bribery and an island. I want to make sure I can get to this iconic rift scene. Just, you know, get rid of his stuff if I need to, although he can obviously just play them both on the same turn again, so not going to rush to do that, but I want to make sure I have the island for it. Maybe try and set up one big swing with the drakes. So this turn I just cast bribery, see what I can get from his deck. And he does counter that. Which is fine. I mean, the alternative was to Cyclonic Roots or something, and I'd much rather he counters the bribery. It would have been nice if I could find, like, an Elish Norn or something in his deck, though. Pretty much win me the game. So I cast Sleight of Hand with my remaining mana, just reveal two islands. So, no attacks. I don't want to just swing into the Drakes. Plus, I don't want to give him the opportunity to play Drevi and swing back. So he casts Jace and bounces his Drowner of Hope. So, I'm definitely starting to fall behind on this board now, for sure. A Frank Search, that's an okay draw. I'll play it out. Draw three cards. Or two cards. Sphinx is Bone Wand. It's pretty good. It's kind of slow on this board, but I keep it in hopes that, you know, if I could get those counters building up, I could start blowing up Hornet Queen, the Drake, Jace, and maybe not have to worry about rifting them away. So I'll untap three lands and play it out. And pass the turn back. At the end of his turn, he flashes into Revy. Just taps down a Drake. Brainstorms with Jace. Runs out of Johnny and puts a plus one plus one counter on all his creatures. And then Bant charms away the Sphinx Bone Wand, so that plan goes out the window. Uh, this turn I draw Sleep though, which is good. I'm able to tap down his board and knock out his two Planeswalkers, which is good because Cyclonic Rift would have just returned them to his hand and he would have just been able to replay them later. This deals with them more permanently. So I send enough at them. And I kind of forgot here, I could have attacked with all these other Drakes and gotten 10 more damage in, which is pretty significant, but I forgot that these don't untap. I was thinking it was just a one turn tap down effect. So I do miss out on a bunch of damage here, which is unfortunate. And he casts Acidic Slime, just blows up my boots. Doesn't seem like he has any way to actually kill Talrin though. So this turn I decided to just attack with all the Drakes. I know he can block one, but I was, this is the point where I realized my mistake last turn. That with this turn, I can swing in right now and get in with six Drakes and do 12 damage. Then at the end of his turn, Cyclonic Rift, get in with another 14 or 15, 16 with that. Uh, 17, 18 with Think Twice. And the numbers are starting to get up pretty high, so I realized that 10 damage from last turn makes a huge difference here. So I knock him down to 21, he casts Drowner of Hope, sacrifices some Scions to tap my creatures, goes to combat, and I Cyclonic Rift. He is empty handed so this is all he can do from this hand you can see is cast a Revy again. So I sack the Scion and flashback thing twice, I figure I lose one damage from the Scion and I gain two from the Drake, plus, you know, draw a card, obviously. And I just draw a land for turn. I definitely have a lot more lands than I would have liked to at this point in the game. And of course, there's two more. So here I just swing out with everything, or just with the drakes, and knock him out of 5. So you can see at this point, if I didn't miss that attack earlier, he would have been dead this turn. So it's definitely unfortunate. And now he's going to get to play out most of his cards again. So I'm really hoping 
Either he can't get enough blockers or I can draw something good. And Trail of Evidence, not really what I was hoping for. But you line up all the attackers. He can block seven block seven attackers, which leaves exactly five things left to hit him. So I'm kind of banking on whatever the one card he has I don't know about in his hand. I'm sort of just banking on it being a dead card to figure out to swing for the win here. Worst case scenario, we both have a pretty empty board. And I can just recast Talrand and Trail of Evidence. And that's it. He has nothing, and he's dead. So that was a pretty good game. Um, it was almost over a lot sooner with that opposition. It would have been fun if he didn't have that cross and grip. And pretty much there was no coming back from it at that point for him. But he did have the cross and grip, so it went on a little bit longer. And thanks to some decent tempo cards, I was able to squeeze some damage through. So even with missing that big attack, I was able to get through exactly lethal here. And it was a good game. So, see you guys next time. Hope you enjoy. Bye.